Hello ladies and gentlemen, the Green Raven here. Shakes and fidget time, right? Um, let's see what we got here. Ooh, I missed quite a lot. Oktoberfest, Halloween, Friday the 13th. Oh, international. Alright, anyways, um, right. So, um, Right, so unlike my actual rant topic, I don't really have anything in particular to talk about. Um, so this is just me randomly just talking about whatever. Um, this, these are like my fireside chats, sort of. Uh, these things always go a lot smoother in your head. Um, oh, I can actually build things if I want to. But I need 100 gold for that. Oh, I can't even build nothing. Derp. He. <laughs> Anyways, um. Right. Let us actually. Uh. Let me just cook a check and. Alright, let me do the voices real quick and. Oh, fuck, I always hate her voice. She's always good at paying shit. Wow, I forgot how little. <laughs> uh, my actual character that I'm playing with. Oh, quote unquote playing. Uh, he, he gets like in almost the thousands. He has like 200, 300, 500, 700 per thing. Alright, deadly curiosity. Hey you, listen to me. Travel to Magwin. It is said that everyone who looks around this place dies. I want you to take a close look and draw a picture for me. If you do, do it with style. Yeah, I, I do bad female voices. And away we go. Alright, anyways, um... So yeah, nothing really in particular to talk about. Um, not like with my rant topics that I made that have a very specific uh, thing per episode. So just a random fireside chat sort of thing. Uh, Nat or anyone else who's watching this, um, you're getting a preemptive blog update, I guess. So yeah. Um, right, so first and foremost, we moved. Um, I briefly mentioned this in the video about um, Crusaders of Lost Idols and all that, but didn't go into details. Now I have the time, I'll go into details. Um, we moved. So yeah, uh, the whole eviction thing we had going. Uh, for for the, some of you who are lost or don't remember, let me backtrack quite a bit. Um, my dad, my dad's drinking problem has spiraled out of control. Like, just beyond, you know. Um, and for the longest time, my mom and my brother were putting up with it. Um, I was the first one just throw down the towel, throw down the gauntlet, whatever you want to call it. I'm just like, fuck this, we're done. But mom and my brother were like, well, you know, kind of, maybe. Maybe he'll get his act together, it's a fate. No, he didn't. Um, he just kept drinking more and more and more and more and stealing money can't hold down a job because he can't stay sober. He wasn't showing up sober to work. Um, like, it was just bad. It, as bad as you can imagine drinking, getting, that, that was it. Um, we are deep in debt. We are just shit deep in debt. Um, yeah, so eventually uh, we couldn't pay for our house anymore. For like two years now, actually. And eventually, the bank kind of kind of got fed up with it, so they started dangling this big word over us called eviction. And for the longest time, we were kind of freaking out, trying to figure out, you know, what we're gonna do, what's gonna happen, all that. Um, my dad one day stormed off in a fit of rage into a hotel because he couldn't take it with us anymore. Yeah, because totally, he's the one suffering. And he's been there ever since. We, however, have managed to find a place. Um, it's a condo, though. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious that we're not going to be moving into any mansions exactly. Um, our last place was an actual house. Like, an actual just house. Nat, I know sometimes your derpy brain keeps saying apartment, but no. It was an actual house. It was a real house. It was just us living there. Um, two floors, three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Two-car garage, nice, big, spacious backyard. 
um, a driveway f big enough to fit uh, eight cars about during like holiday seasons and all that. We had an actual real house. That's what it was. And we managed, the three of us, by the way, me, my mom, and my brother, um, we found a condo. It's it's smaller. It's it's a lot smaller than uh, where you In fact, actually, it's a one-bedroom condo. So, yeah, we're a bit crap, but the important thing is Dad's not with us anymore. Um, we're not bleeding money anymore. Um, so hopefully things will re resolve themselves. Um, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it's a one-bedroom condo. Uh, my mom obviously gets to sleep in the bedroom. My brother gets the tiny little um, room off to the side. And I am sleeping on the couch in the living room. Um, I posted a I No, I haven't actually posted. I know Nat has seen that photo, but I'm when I'm going to update my blog in Angel Spire, I'm going to post a photo. It's small. It's cramped. I'm right behind the dining room table on this tiny ass little couch. It's uncomfortable. It's small. It's cramped. It's terrible. But life keeps on ticking, you know. It's it's better than uh, living in a cardboard box. I'll tell you that much. So, but yeah, um, things are a little tight right now, and they're gonna be that way for a while. Originally, when we started, you know, trying to deal with this whole fixin thing, um, first off, we were looking for an apartment, uh, and then we thought we were all gonna be living, you know, this way for just a couple months. But then, you know, once mom started doing the math and everything, um, yeah, this isn't going to be for a couple of months. This is, this is going to be for a good while. Um, oh, good lord, Matt, how do you put up with these melee battles? Why is this not over? <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, originally we thought this was only going to be just a temporary thing, but... Now that we actually moved, now that we actually did a thing, um, yeah, we're not, we're, we're going to be here for a while. Um, another thing, a condo, for those of you who don't know, it's like an apartment, it's the size of an apartment, except instead of making, um, huzzah! Oh uh, yeah, this is like the only voice I can do good, gooderish. <clears throat> the Amazing Journey. Hey you, listen to me. Travel to Nevermore. There might be absolutely nothing. Legend says it's the most boring place in the world. I need someone stupid who will investigate. Get yourself moving. Almost two gold pieces. Ten for... Ten percent for treasure kill. What? I didn't know. Oh yeah, there we yes, we are. Anyways, um... So right, originally we thought, yeah, we have our own guild, don't we? House of Stupid grand thing is. Anyways, um, so yeah, originally we thought this was just going to be a quick thing, a couple of months, but after doing the math, no. And a condo is basically like an apartment. It's small enough that are like an apartment, again, one bedroom. But the main difference is instead of making monthly uh, rent payments, you buy it for the long term. Um, so yeah. Now, here, here's, the, here's the thing, though. Um, originally, we were looking for apartments because we thought we were going to just, you know, be a temporary thing and just move on with our lives eventually after, like, a year or two. But then there's also a few other things, like the fact that my mom and my brother's jobs are both in jeopardy. Um, they both work at the same company, first of all, so that right there is already a thing. And for those of you who haven't read my blogs or don't remember... <clears throat> For the last like year or so, they've been in the middle of a hostile takeover, a corporate hostile takeover. Uh, some rich Texan cowboy decided to buy up the company, and he wants to move it down to Texas. Everything's got to be in Texas. Um, all of the factories that were here in Chicago, they already moved. Um, like all the all the all the manufacturing stuff was already being done in Texas. The only thing that's still left here in Chicago is um, the corporate offices. That's where my brother and my mom work. 
my mom works in the finance department, my brother's customer service or something on like that, but whatever, yeah. So uh, the corporate offices aren't particularly big on, because like factories and factory workers can easily be replaced or whatever, but like corporates being a little more uppity, uh, they don't want to move. And yeah, but you know, the rich Texan obviously isn't one to give up, so he's been trying to win them over, I guess, or something. And so yeah, so pretty much any day, at any moment, my mom and brother can both lose their jobs because they're not moving to Texas, you know? That's that's not a thing that's happening. We can't afford that. Um, so my mom did math, and it's just better to live in a condo because this way we have the security, the peace of mind to fall back on. That we you don't we don't have to make monthly payments for like an apartment in case they lose their jobs. So, and again, my mom she's already at that age where she can't just start over fresh somewhere new, you know. And my brother, my brother is doofus. He didn't quite graduate college. The only reason why he has his job is because mom pulled some strings, and so neither one of them can get a job easily. Um, so yeah, and obviously I have my social anxiety issues and I can't work right now and all that, so the safe option is to buy a condo. It's a little more expensive right now in the short term, but in the long run it'll actually save us money. Because again, like, monthly payments will add up over time. So, so anyways, yeah, um, you know... Um, let's see, ooh, seven all gold. The veteran veterinarian. Hey, you, listen to me. There's that veteran veterinarian. Travel together, Magma, Magmaron. Just keep them away from the animals or you'll try to neuter them. Are you in? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I've uh, rambled on for about eight minutes about how we just moved. Uh, so yeah, that's a thing. Um... There's a little bit of peace and quiet right now going on, so that's why I'm recording. My dog is being adorable and just laying on the floor. Um, another thing I want to talk about is, well, actually, I'll get to that later, but Trump is Trump is president. Hooray. Uh, it is Thursday, November 10th, and Trump has been president-elect for one day. Um... The Canadian immigration website apparently has crashed several times since the announcement has been made that Trump will be our next president. Um, Nat, I do believe, said she wants to uh, sign up for a Canadian dating site and see what comes of it. And uh, the enigmatic chick, mostly known only as Leaf, she is currently actually trying to get a Greek citizenship. Um, so yeah, and my brother also mentioned something about fleeing to Canada, so, mm, how did it ever come to this? How did a clown like Trump ever get elected president? It's, it's just sad. It's just really sad. I mean, everyone agrees this election is terrible. All the choices, all the choices nominees are terrible, even Hillary herself. But for, you know, whatever you can say about Hillary, at least she's not a bigot. At least she's not just hateful and mean, spiteful, evil. Donald Trump is just, fuck the Mexicans, fuck the women, you know. White manpower. Rich manpower, you know, just... It's just sickening, so, um... Yeah, uh, I'm not joking, by the way. Leaf is actually trying to get a Greek citizenship. Absolutely not a joke. Though, to be fair, in her case, uh, she does have a boyfriend there. And she does visit every summer. But it, it's the perfect excuse for her to actually flee the country for good. But anyways, um, Trump is president. Terrifying times ahead. Uh, which which kind of I want to suck to the next thing. Uh, Mexicans. Nat already knows what I'm talking about because I already... She, she's the keeper of all my secrets. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you know, Trump and his 
very brave, smart supporters. Hate Mexicans. They want them deported. Uh, they're stealing American jobs. Oh, no. Uh, you know what? It's absolutely true. It's 100% true. It's undeniable. They are stealing American jobs. But you know what? Americans are giving them a reason to steal jobs. So here's here's my personal story involving Mexicans. Um, before we were about to move, uh, we had to find a moving company, obviously, to uh, well move our shit. Right, so uh, we had a non-Mexican company approach us and a Mexican company. So the non-Mexicans came in, um, and they're like, first off, we charge by the hour, okay? Um, each individual furniture, like, the price is added up per furniture, like, you know, couch, $100, TV, $100, like, whatever. Each, each individual piece of furniture is its own price. Also, heavy furniture, such as refrigerators, dishwashers, that will be extra, double, whatever you want to call it. And then... <clears throat> Safety precautions like straps, bubble wrap, all that, that comes extra. So if you want your stuff not to break, you got to pay them a little extra so they can wrap it up in bubble wrap. Uh, and then the guy took a walk around our house, took a look at everything we want to move, and he's like, he gave us an estimate that uh, they will get the job done in about eight hours. And mom's like, okay, thank you, we'll let you know, and let them go. Next came in a Mexican moving company. First of all, they charge a flat fee. Just load the truck up with whatever you're going to load it up, and you still pay whatever. Okay? Um, things like bubble wrap and straps and all that, free of charge. It, it's all part of the part of the fee. It's just one flat fee for the whole move. Okay? Just nothing extra, nothing. And he walked around the house, too, to go look at all the same furniture. And he says, we'll do it in four hours. And mom did some thinking, and was like, you know what? The flat fee is actually more than the hourly rate. But we'll just take the chance with them, okay? So the guy said they will do all the moving. They'll pack everything up, move everything, and unpack everything at our new place in just four hours. He lied. He actually lied. It didn't take them four hours. It took them just under three. It was like two hours and 45 minutes. They are hard, efficient workers. They work cheap. They're good they, like I said, they were very fast. They were very careful. They wrapped everything in a bubble wrap and didn't ask us for additional money for that. So who are you going to go with? Are you going to go with the not Mexicans who will charge you more money for every little thing or the Mexicans who will do it fa fast, safe, and efficient and charge you one small fee? Of course, going to go with the Mexicans. And this pretty much applies to the entire country, to a lot of the things. So, yes, they are stealing American jobs because Americans aren't good at doing their jobs. Made in America doesn't quite mean the same thing anymore, okay? There used to be a time back in, like, the 50s, you know, when you could say, made in America, yeah, and that would mean something. Right now, that doesn't mean shit, most Americans are underqualified to do their own jobs, okay? Ask Nat. She's in charge of several people at her work. Same as my brother. They, they got these, like, pseudo-manager positions um, that where they're watching over, you know, other employees. My brother, all the fucking time, complains about some idiot not knowing what he's doing. And, and this even applies to the actual managers. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. The Mexicans know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They're doing it fast, clean, and efficient. It's just like, of course, yes, of course people are going to choose Mexicans. So no wonder the, you know, the pot-bellied rednecks feel threatened that their jobs are being taken away because they're not good at their damn jobs. If I have a chance between do, having a job done half-assed by some redneck or a Mexican who would do the job right, I'm going to go with the Mexican. Like, I'm sorry, I don't like to have my money wasted. Um, let me just quickly do this guy and I'll get back to them. Crate and Quarrel. Yeah, you goofball. Do you need a job? Do you see this chest? 
I will climb into it now, <laughs> carry it to Marwin. And remember, lonely are the brave. <laughs> Stay cool. <laughs> what the fuck am I even doing right now? Anyways, so yeah, Mexicans. I mean, yes, they are stealing jobs because Americans aren't good at them. Right now, again, this is a sort of a preemptive blog update. Um, for those of you who are watching, you won't be surprised when I actually post. Um, we bought this place up. We needed to have it fixed. Um, it, it's not that there was, you know, it was bad or broken. It's just that a little old lady lived here before us. She obviously passed away. And things weren't broken. They are just sort of old, you know. And my mom just wanted new stuff here. Plus the get rid of the old woman smell kind of thing whatever um so right we we bought this place back in like july i think even or august you know we, we bought a while back but then um right there's like legal stuff paperwork whatever and then there was about a period of about two months where we could hire contractors and you know get them all together so uh my cousin's like i know a guy I'm like all right so this guy comes over he's russian by the way um, I dislike Russians, even though I am one myself. I'm an Uncle Tom. I hate my own kind. Um, so yeah, this Russian guy comes in, and he's like, I know some guys. So basically, we're not hiring just him. We're hiring him and his little team of gremlins. But, you know, whatever. We gave this guy a shot. Um, they had a month. A whole month to get this place fixed up. They were supposed to be done one week before we were supposed to move in here. Okay? They were not. The deadline was not met. They had a month, and they did not meet it. Not even close. Uh, so then they're like, okay, you know what, you know what, okay, it's fine. We will fix this place up the day of your move. Like, the day you're actually moving, everything will be ready. I'll give you three guesses, folks. It was not ready. We have been here... For almost two weeks now. It's Thursday. We've been here since Friday. The other Friday. Um, let me go pop my calendar because I'm bad at uh, the things. Um, we've been here since the 21st. Uh, 28th. We moved here on October 28th. It is right now November 10th. Almost two weeks that we've been here. Um, the ceiling is still missing things. There's a chunk of the floor missing. Um, the shower still has building materials in it. The garage still has materials in it. I have not showered since we came here. I would like to shower very, very much so. D despite the, you know, the, uh, the words, the words, folks. The, uh, myth that, you know, unemployed people don't shower. No, that's, that's not just because I don't like this mean I don't like to shower. I, I have not showered. I have not really. Only just yesterday I actually could do my laundry because the uh, laundry room was finally freed up. They are not done. They're not even close to being done. And w when they come here, they don't come here until like 11 or noon. Okay. And one time my mom called and she's like, so how's the work going? I'm like, what work? There's nobody even here. And this was like two in the afternoon. So mom had to call them up and nag them to death to finally show their asses here to get some work done. Um, they they have not finished. They're still not finished. Right now, as I speak, there's still a chunk of the floor missing, and they are three weeks behind schedule, and this is on top of having a whole month to do this. Okay? Now, on top of the Russian guy slash guys, we also hired some Mexicans to do some work. Um... They showed up at 8 in the morning. Two of them, by the way. Two Mexicans showed up at 8 in the morning. Like, bam, just right on the dot. By 11 o'clock, they were done with everything, and they left. Two Mexicans did more job in a shorter amount of time than seven Russian guys did in a month. Okay? And this, and this is exactly the fucking point. This is exactly the fucking point. They work hard. They're hard, efficient workers. Oh, oh, on top of that, when the Mexicans were done, 
they got paper towels and just like normal towels and they cleaned everything up and they you know cleaned up after themselves the russians they left a dirty mess after the, like there's just like this disgusting layer of dust on everything like i said the bathroom is still filled with building supplies and they don't clean up after themselves and a lot of like Americans also work like that. I know Nat was lucky enough to have some magical genie contractor who was efficient, but in my experience, at least, most of the workers aren't quite as motivated or energetic to do their jobs as Mexicans are. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I had crappy life experiences, but almost all of the experience that I've had with you know, construction workers and my dad being one, does that does that really help the situation that my dad was actually a freelance contractor too? No. So in my terrible life experience, Mexicans are just more efficient, more hardworking, more everything. On top of that, <laughs> I told this to that the other day, they, they play very lovely, energetic mariachi music while they work. They're very jolly like that. You know, like, I, I was, I was kind of, like, peeking into the the work area where they're working, and they're just kind of, like, they're not quite dancing, but they're not just rigidly picking things up and just hammering, you know? They're kind of, like, going with the flow, you know? I, I, as, as, as a music person, I, I kind of respect that, you know? And again, and, and these are the people you want deported from this country, Oh yeah, they came here illegally. Oh man, that's that's terrible. Um, remind me again how the pilgrims came here? Yeah, I I sort of remember them filling out all these paperwork and see like the redneck agenda. It's very convenient for them to go back to the founding fathers when it suits them, but they forget simple things like this. You know, like this country is founded on on immigration. Immigrants built this country literally. You know, like in the in the 1900s, the early 1900s, you had the Irish and the Chinese working in factories and in railroads, and this country was founded on immigration. Yes, many of them came here illegally. So, you know, just like um, the noises are mildly annoying me. Hurry up and kill them already. Kill him! Kill him! Ta da! Oh, this guy again. Uh, which is more? Okay. <clears throat> it. You again. Okay, here we go. I'm sure you've heard of it. Escort the subject to Gnorum Grim. It will follow you until you reach your destination. And maybe for the rest of your life. Got it. Yeah, sure, why not? Anyways, um, back to the rant. Um, so yeah, th this country is founded on immigration. How convenient that suddenly you forget that, you know? Like I said, early 1900s, who do you think was working on the railroads and in the factories? The Irish, the Chinese, the immigrants. But now all of a sudden, who Mexicans are? And uh, I think it was Slave who posted this. The Statue of Liberty Creed. Give me your tired, your poor, your hungry, your dying or something like that I, I don't remember I, I'm gonna be honest I don't remember it too well but point is this country is built on immigration like this is bullshit this whole build a wall for Mexico and kick all the Mexicans out is just so yeah I mean in my experience living here in Chicago for the majority of my life um, I've dealt with diversity I've dealt with you know Mexicans Indians whoever they're not, you know, fucking monsters. They're not, ooh, they're stealing jobs. Like, the, the way the rednecks make it sound, oh, they're stealing jobs. They're like, evil little Grinches creeping in the night, you know, stealing jobs. No. You suck at your job, you're fat and you're lazy, you don't do it well, and they do it better than you. Again, I just gave you a perfect example. We had a Mexican moving company and a non-Mexican moving company. The Mexicans did everything way better way cheaper. Who are you going to pick? I'm just going to pick the Mexicans. So, I don't know. It, it's, just, it's just fucked up. Um, Trump wins and the redneck agenda goes through. It's a sad time to be in this country. 
so yeah um that's mainly it i guess just the big things i want to get off my chest we moved and trump's president um still about four and a half minutes left so i'll ramble something and then call it a wrap um not that it matters from any point of reference to you watching this <clears throat> but uh i plan on recording a few adventure books slash visual novels today so nat you have that to look forward to hopefully not it won't take too long to up upload them i'm gonna do legacy of dorn uh the warhammer book and uh, catacombs of the undercity both of which i picked up during the latest sale so yeah once i'm done with uh seraphina's crown i will actually do a let's play of that uh yeah it's, it's a pretty fun game nat uh, I would love to do a Let's Play of Guns of a Curse Online, <laughs> but you know my crappy PC laptop thing. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately that won't be happening. Uh, but yeah, Guns of a Curse Online, for Nad and for anyone else who was sk skittish about playing it because of PvP, it has story mode now. It has single player training. Uh, there, there's, a, there's practice mode you can do where it's basically just you and the AI. Uh, and it doesn't even count towards your kill streak and anything like that. It's literally practice. Just you can shoot your own ship and blow the shit up, and so yeah, you can get some practice. I I, I do kind of understand Nat's mindset and pages and everyone was kind of sketchy about that because um, when when we originally started playing Guns of Vickers online, ages ago, um, Kaki was the only one. Kokisha from the forums was the only one who actually knew how to play the game. Nat and I were just like, ha. Huh? And I'm at least kind of good at um, learning on the fly. So I always have that. But Nat usually gets a little disoriented with new things unless she knows what she's doing. So, which is fine, you know, it's, it's perfectly, totally, you know. But luckily, um, years of Call of Duty have taught me how to adjust <laughs> to situations on the fly. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to just sort of click with things. Uh, but yeah, speaking of Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare came out. My brother got it, pre-ordered it, and he plans on not seeing the daylight for quite some time. <laughs> uh, for most of you who aren't into Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty number here actually cares about it. Um, the reason why most people pre-ordered it and bought it is because the new version has the remastered Modern Warfare. The game that started the whole Call of Duty craze all the way back in 2005, maybe, whatever it was. So yeah, they have the remastered Advanced Warfare edition bundled with Infinity. Nobody nobody really wants to play Infinity. They just want to play the original Call of Duty on modern systems, which is what my brother... My brother was like, eh, I'm done with Call of Duty. But then he's like, remastered Modern Warfare, oof. So, yeah, um, I will actually play Infinity because it's more sci-fi-ish and that's more up my alley. I'm not a fan of realistic shooters, to be honest. Um, I, li I like my shooters with a bit of uh, sci-fi zing and lightning cannons and teleportation, that sort of thing. And modern and Infinite Warfare, the new Call of Duty, it's actually what that is. Uh, you actually get to fly a space fighter. And you get to shoot pew pew lasers, so uh, that's actually up my alley. Um, a minute left. What else can I close up with? Um, I think that's it, really, pretty much. I only pretty much wanted to ramble about Trump and us moving, and Mexicans stealing jobs. This election has been very sad, very depressing. Um. Yeah, I mean, Hillary's not exactly a prize pig herself. But again, she's at least she's not a bigoted, spiteful, evil, greedy asshole. I mean, I'm sure she's like any other politician. Um, she's got her kinks and flaws. But I mean, honestly, Donald Trump goes above and beyond being a bigot. I mean, just just above and beyond. He He deserves a medal just for how bad he can get. And apparently... According to Nat and my brother, he's not even the worst part. His vice president, Pence, Key, Penso, Pence Man, something like that. 
obviously not past me. Whatever. Apparently, he's even worse than Trump. Uh, I haven't actually done any research into that because I don't give a shit. So uh, I'm just going to take my brother's word for it. He said something like, uh, he makes Dick Cheney look relatively sane. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to trust him on that. Um, so, yeah. People are fleeing the country. People are just freaking out over Trump. Um, Cookie, let's both of us. Nothing? Okay. Um... Right, we do the city job thing. Ooh, 14 gold. Shh, lucrative. Oh, Dr. Babu Ubu. We never visited him. Um, so yeah, people are freaking out about Trump being president. Oh, boo-hoo, it's five gold. Jesus, God, you freaking miser. Um, so yeah, Donald Trump has been elected president. Happy days. Anyways, I'm going to call it a wrap, and as I said, I'm going to go on to recording some visual novels and adventure books. Look forward to those uh, being uploaded soonish. And this is Green Haven signing off. Uh, thanks for listening to my audio blog. Um, I'll see you some other time. Bye-bye.